Furious Driving, presented by Diamond Bright, keeping the Furious fleet shining, and you can protect, clean, and care for your car with 10% off site wide using code FD10. Bidding Classics, the online marketplace for appreciating classic cars, with more cars added every week. And now, like Dumb and Bright, Lancaster Insurance Services is a company I've been a happy customer of for quite some time. Lancaster are one of the biggest specialist insurers in the UK, covering all areas of vintage to modern classic car and motorbike. So give them a call and see if you can save on your cover. Follow the links in the description below. Hello and welcome to Furious Driving. It is not a good day in Furious Land today, because as a number of you have pointed out to me last night, in fact, before I'd even finished reading the comments on the last video, this car failed its MOT really badly. Like, really, really badly. As in, you know, I was sitting there reading the description thinking, ooh, I wonder how much I'll get if I sell the wheels separately. I wonder how I can take that steering wheel back off again and get my money back for that. That kind of fail. So, without further ado, let's go and climb in it one last time and look at the MOT fail and see what we're gonna do about it next. Oh, it is absolutely bitter outside, Baltic conditions. It was like fairly decent snow this morning. The weather hasn't really improved. The snow's gone, washed away by this icy, well, slushy snow-like rain, which is just, I can't decide what it is gonna be one minute to the next. But anyway, it's not good weather for doing work on cars in, so at least I'm inside the car now, and it's warm and dry, if nothing else. Before we carry on though, I will take a moment to quickly say, that's not my BMW. The one series with a broken front that is now apparently leaking oil onto my driveway is nothing to do with me. It's a neighbor's car it's waiting to get fixed. So I've had to answer so many comments about that. There's now even a hashtag, hashtag not my BMW. So yeah, not my car. But anyway, right, so what did this car fail on? Why is it now hanging in the balance? Certainly my plan for driving it down to its new owner a couple of hours away and coming back in something new and interesting has been somewhat scuppered for the time being. Well, let me take you through the test. So this fail sheet admittedly is not my longest ever, but it is fairly sizable. I'll start off with the minor stuff that I think we already knew about. First of all, repair as soon as possible minor defect. The windscreen is damaged, but not adversely affecting the driver's near side. It's down there now by the passenger side windscreen wiper. It's basically hidden by the wiper most of the time. You don't even notice it. I had spoken to the MOT station prior to taking the car in for a test a couple of weeks ago, just to see what they would say about it. And so I knew it was only going to come up as a repair slash advisory. Um, we've also got monitor and repair if necessary advisories on the brake pipe being corroded or covered in grease or basically unclear. And I have actually been up to the garage and had a long chat with the MOT guy who actually looked over the car. He said he wasn't particularly concerned, but you can see there was like stuff on the pipes. He couldn't really see maybe a bit of surface on there. Nothing to particularly worry about. The problem is the do not drive um, is rust. Big, big rust. Oh, and a direction indicator not working, which apparently, which apparently counts as a major defect and repair immediately. Uh, I will just say, I, someone commented, how can I not have noticed the indicator was not working? Well, the thing is, what have I done with the keys? The thing is, and let me turn this on so you can hear it. This is the left-hand indicator. The right-hand indicator was flashing at the same speed as that. This is how the right-hand indicator is now flashing, so I would 100% have noticed that on the way to the MOT. I don't think I actually indicated right, right at any point on the way to the MOT. I think I indicated left a couple of times, but the only times I needed to indicate right, there was no one around, so I didn't, so I never saw that. <laughs> so that's just massively unlucky that the bulb was gone en route to the test, so that's one minor thing. Anyway, back to the rust. What we've got, and I'll read this out for you because it sounds utterly terrifying when it's phrased in this manner. The uh, suspension component mounting prescribed area is corroded to the extent that control of the vehicle is likely to be adversely affected near side, rear, inner brackets still hold. Suspension component mounting prescribed area is corroded to the extent that control of the vehicle is likely to be adversely affected offside rear inner still hold. Uh, it goes on. Direction indicator not working, we just covered that. And then seatbelt anchorage prescribed area strength or continuity significantly reduced near side front inner brackets still hold. What that means is the inner sills have got holes in them. Basically it amounts to though three holes, not four as that does in fact sound. On the passenger side, near the front, near the back, on this side, near the back only. And this is 
the thing that everyone's been saying about this car since as soon as it arrived on the channel. And the thing I was actually aware of on these cars, the Mark IV Golf platform in general and Beetles in particular, really, really suffer from rust like you would not believe. And they go up in those corners of the sills. And so I looked for it and lying on the floor with the car on a jack, I couldn't see those holes. And even when I was looking under the car when the tires were being fitted on Monday, I still couldn't see any holes. I was speaking to the guy who's going to be having this car off me. I was saying it actually looks pretty decent. I'm, I'm really quite impressed with it. But the guy who actually physically tested the car said, the rust is quite hard to find on those beetles, but I know where to look. So I did look and that's how I found it. And then he went on to say that a lot of other MOT people might have missed it. So I don't feel too bad about having missed it, but at the same time, I feel terrible about having missed it because it means the car is, well, it's not saleable in this condition, is it? And it's not drivable in this condition. It's basically sat here as a giant, very pretty paperweight with some nice flowers in it. <sighs> so what do we do at this point? My first thought was, well, can we scrap it for parts? Because before I spoke to the MOT man, I was thinking, oh my God, we have got ourselves a scrap car because if it's as bad as that, can, we, can I even do it? I know I physically can do it, but it comes down to the question of, do I want to, do I have the time? Because I've got to finish welding the Mercedes. I've got to put the brakes in the Mercedes. I've got to finish the Crown Victoria. I've got to sort out whatever, the, making the hippo making a grindy noise. I've got to restore an entire 1969 Mini. Um, I've got to do the turbo and the head gasket on the Tomcat. I've got to take the entire front end off the Alpha because the headlights don't work. So I need to go and sort all of that out. Taking this thing up in the air and welding it is one more thing I really don't want to be doing. And the other thing, of course, if it's hard enough for me to not see it easily on a jack, how easy is it going to be for me to weld, particularly out here when we've got a week of snow forecast? That's stuff I don't want to get into. So I was trying to mentally price up, can I get any money back on the tires? I've just spent out quite a lot of money on a set of four alloys and a set of four brand new tires. I've just bought a brand new leather steering wheel. Um, the previous owner spent a bucket load of cash on this car as well in servicing. It's got a new, um, new timing gubbins. It's been recently serviced. It's had new brakes not long ago. It's basically a fully fettled, lovely new car, which just happens to have some holes in the floor. Then I was thinking, could the place I bought all the bits from, would they want to take it back as a, a complete car to, to strip for parts? Then I thought to myself, okay, let's, before we do anything too hasty, have a chat with the person who was going to take the car and see what he wants to do. Because what we'd arranged to do was I was going to have a car from him, which is, I think, going to be as interestingly divisive as the Beetle was in terms of, you aren't going to see this one coming. So I'm really, really fascinated to see what the internet thinks of this and some money. But I didn't know, would he want me to do the welding so I can re-MOT it and he can have the car presented as a complete thing? Or would he be happier doing his own welding? Because, you know, welding, because welding is it's kind of a variable skill. People do it to different levels. And I don't know how good a welder he is and he doesn't know how good a welder I is. I is, I am. So um, I said, well, do you want to do the welding yourself so you can have the peace of mind that you've done it to your standard? After a short chat, because um, we are on Facebook, we are friends anyway, so it wasn't like a dealing with a stranger. It was much easier this way. Um, we agreed that rather than having the car on a cash swap, we've got a car only swap. So this car will get transported down to him. The new car will get transported up to me and we'll carry on as planned. But I am going to slightly be taking a bath on this car. So my trading up program has taken a bit of a hit at this point. We went from the £400 Mondeo to this, which I kind of assumed was going to be worth about £2,000, basically. Looking at the ads, because these go from around sort of low thousands up to about 3000 on this model year, and depending on condition. This is quite high mileage at 148000 almost, 147897 if you want to be really exact. But the condition, apart from those little holes, is absolutely fantastic. It's got really nice paint. It's now got the nice wheels. It's got really good service history. It's got brand new tyres. It's, it's lovely. I mean, it, it does stand up. If it was lower mileage, this would be certainly two and a half thousand, maybe even more, but I reckon about two grand with this mileage on it. So I think that was going up quite well. But of course, now we're going to have to take a hit on whatever cash was going to come along with the other car. And then we'll have to move the other car on and whatever that makes, that puts us back down a, a level. But sometimes trading with cars, this happens. There are hidden gremlins, hidden, hidden secrets that you don't always know about. You try and do your due diligence 
and sometimes you get burned. I mean, as far as the previous owner knew, it was a really good car, and he's he's also a friend, and I know he wouldn't be trying to diddle me out of a of anything and trying to screw me over because he is a nice guy and I trust him. As far as he was concerned, it was fine. And the previous MOT on this car from March last year didn't mention any kind of corrosion in the chassis because I guess the MOT tester wasn't aware of where to look. If that particular MOT person had been more aware of where these car go, not S cargo, where these car go, um, then maybe it might have shown a pre-warning this time last year. I don't know. So I'm not holding a grudge against Tim in any way because <laughs> he didn't know. I looked at the car more than once. I didn't spot it, so I really can't blame him for not spotting it. It's just one of those things, and it just happened to be that someone who really knows these cars well happened to find the problem. I am very disappointed though, I'm absolutely gutted because I thought this car was such a nice car. I mean, it's still such a nice car. And I was actually really looking forward to the last drive road trip, which is gonna be a video in itself of taking the car down to its new home and then doing the reveal to exchange to something different. But there you go, it's not gonna happen. Cause basically with this, the only place I can drive it is back home to be fixed or to another garage to be fixed. And since that's not what I'm going to be doing, it's staying here on the drive for the time being. But such is life. So, oh well, as they say. We've taken a bath, but we've got a result. And in a few days' time, hopefully, we'll see what's replacing it. So I would like to say, don't feel too sorry for me, because this happens with cars sometimes. If you do want to feel sorry for me, then maybe sign up as a Patreon or a channel member, or head over to furiousdriving.co.uk and buy a mug or a hat or something, and that might soften the blow. <laughs> How's that for a smooth sales pitch? Anyway, so I'm still going to miss the car. I still think it's a lovely, lovely thing. I mean, it's it's very comfortable. It's quite quirky. I quite enjoy driving it. It's not very fast because it's a 1.9 diesel that could do with a remap. It's got air conditioning that actually works, which is brilliant. Um, someone did comment, why don't we just keep it and um, have it as a daily car? I and mean, my wife would quite happily have it in place of her car and not have any car payments and just drive around in this. The problem is though, because it's a 2005 diesel, it's not ULEZ compatible. And she works inside what is going to be the new ULEZ expansion a couple of days a week. So that stops it being a viable car, which is really annoying. This is a brilliant car on our drive, which we could be happily using, but in a few weeks time, we'd have to pay to take it to the destination, which is not, not right, I don't think. I'm not gonna get into a whole political rant, but I'm really quite, annoyed about the whole ULS thing because apart from anything else studies have shown that the areas are expanding to will make zero difference or 0.1 percent difference to air quality it's just it's all about money and it's hurting people like us basically anyway that's not what i'm ranting about i'm ranting about rusty holes in the bottom of my volkswagen ah oh well so yeah i'll leave it there and yeah if it stops raining and goes above freezing i might go and have another look at the bottom of the crown victoria um, otherwise I'll try and fix something else indoors in the barn. So next video, who knows? We are back to join me again next time for whatever happens next in this roller coaster that is furious driving. If you haven't already subscribed, then please do right now. And yeah, liking the, yeah, all the stuff, yeah, blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna go, go weep into a cup of tea. Thanks for watching. Bye bye, Beetle. I miss you already.